It has occurred to me that I have not made a complete game on my YouTube channel for Phaser 3 since Phaser 3 became available. So I've got a very simple game that I'm going to put together called Save the Humans. And it just takes three images here, an alien, a bullet, and a human. And to do this, you'll need to get the utility template from phasergames.com, which is just a basic template with a few extra helper classes in there. And I'll be using the snippets. Phaser 3 snippets here from phasergames.com. And the first thing I need to do is enable the game to have physics. So under the physics snippets, you'll find a physics object. Copy that. And then we just paste that at the end of the config object to put our game together. Let's go over to scene main then and preload our images. We need to load the image of the alien and the bullet. And then finally the human. Great. Now let's make a grid to divide up the game into equal parts. We can use our built-in align class that's built into the utility template. This A grid equals new align grid. And then we need to pass in a few things. We need to pass in a scene, which is this scene main. We need to pass in the number of rows. I'm going to use 11 and the number of columns. I'll use 11 for that as well. And I'll show you how this works. This A grid show numbers, and I'll refresh here. There, now I have a list of numbers that fills the screen, and this will work on any size screen. So if you're on a phone or not, then we can place them accurately. And to place something on the grid, I'll just make an alien real quick. Bar alien equals this add sprite, and I'll just place it at zero, zero, and the key of alien. So now that's up at the top, and I can place it on the align grid by saying this a grid place at index, and for example, square 15, and alien for the object. There, now that places that on square 15. So we've got a flexible grid that will expand to the size of our screen. And it'll change the cell width and height based on the screen's height and width. Let's make the alien a little smaller. We can use a built-in function in the align class. Align scale to game width alien. And we'll make it 10% of the game. So what this does is it takes the screen's width and then it makes the alien a percentage that we pass it, in this case 0.1, 10%, and then it scales it proportionally. So now the alien is 10% of the game's width. Next, I'll make a function to add characters, add char, and I'll just move this code down here. And I'll call it from up here just for testing. We'll put it on a timer in a bit. And I'll change the name alien to char because it might be the alien and it might be the human. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and make it choose that. Bar rand equals phaser math between and we'll say 0 and 100. And if rand is greater than 50, then the char is an alien. Bar char equals this add sprite, zero, zero, alien, else we'll use the human key. And we'll place it over there at square number 21. So it's an alien, a human. Great. Now let's give it some physics here. Char set velocity x, and we'll say negative 100. And because we're adding the sprite directly to the scene, then that's not going to work. We need to do it to the physics, this physics add sprite. Now let's give it a look. And there it goes. Now we're going to have a lot of these characters on the screen, and we need to be able to keep up with them. So I'm going to add in a couple of groups here. I'm going to add in first this char group equals this physics add group. And I'm also going to put in a bullet group for when we put in the bullets later. 
And now I need to add the char, the character, to the char group before I set any physics. Otherwise, it will take all the physics, the velocity, all that off of the character if I add it to a group after. So this char group, add char. Next, in the update loop, I can iterate through all the children in that group. This char group children, iterate function child. And if child x is less than zero, then we can say child x equals 10. And the reason I'm going ahead and doing that is so it won't keep hitting this loop. And then child set velocity x 100. Because even though I set the velocity to go to the right, it might take a few times through the update loop and it would be hitting this again and again because we're also going to say child y plus equals child display height and if we didn't put in that child x equals 10 it would just keep falling down good now if it's at the other side, if child x is greater than game config width, then we'll say child x minus equals 10 and child set velocity x negative 100. And also child y plus equals child display height. Great. Now let me grab a timer snippet. Over here, snippets, phase of three, phase of three time snippets. Grab that first one there, phase of timer. This time add event delay in milliseconds. So 3,000 every three seconds. Call back this add char. Call back scope this loop true. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this add char on there. Otherwise, it's going to wait a full three seconds before it adds the first character. And we want it to add one right away and then one every three seconds after. Great. Now, the idea is to shoot the aliens and not the humans. So let's go ahead and put in the bullet now. Add bullet, bar bullet, equals this physics, add sprite, zero, zero, bullet. Now we're going to place this wherever the pointer is, wherever the mouse is, on the X, but not the Y. The Y, we want it down towards the bottom of the screen. So we're going to pass in a pointer object, and we're going to put the X then at pointer x and that is going to come from the on down event the pointer down we can add the pointer down event to anywhere on the canvas by saying this input on pointer down this add bullet this for the scope And there it is there up at the top because we're still adding it at zero. But we'll put it down at game config height times 90%. There we go. Now make that bullet fly. Bullet set velocity y. And we'll make it go really fast, like negative 500. Wow, look at it go. And that's a little big. So we'll scale that. Align, scale to game width. Bullet, point, let's see, point zero 0.05. Let's try that. It's still really big. Zero, point zero 0.025. That's better. 
Then I'm going to grab another snippet over here under physics for the collider. Physics snippets. I'm going to put this right at the end of the create function. This add collider, this char group, and this bullet group. And it just occurred to me I have not put the bullet on the bullet group. This bullet group, add bullet. So now they're interacting with each other. But we want it to destroy whatever it hits. So to that collider, we can add a function, this hit char, and I'll make that function in just a moment. And then the next parameter is another function. It's a function that you can call to return a true or a false to say whether or not to let the collision go ahead or not. I always put null there because I don't use it. And this for the scope. Hit char for the function, and it'll be past two objects. One will be the character, and the other the bullet. And we can say char destroy. There. We should also destroy the bullet as well, otherwise it'll keep flying and hit other things. And now when we add the character here, if the char is an alien, we can say char is human equals false. We'll just copy that line for down here. Char is human equals true. And then if char is human equals true, and console log hit human. So great. Get the aliens and try not to get the humans. It's easy when it's all aliens there, but once you get some humans in there too, it's kind of hard not to hit them. Oh, hit the human. And I'm going to take that down, the timer there, down to like 1500. Let's put it on half. And down here in the update, if child y is greater than game config height, then child destroy. Now, there is a thing here where you're iterating through children. If you destroy them within the loop, sometimes you have a problem and the child doesn't exist. So I always just now check if child. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive because you're looping through all the children, so why wouldn't the child be there if it passes that parameter? But it's just a glitch somewhere in the logic. It takes it out of one list, it destroys the child, but it still has a reference on the list somewhere. So just check to see if the child exists. Oh, so that's, that's much harder now. Can I get it without hitting the human? All right, so there is the basics of our game. The basic game is done. What we need now are the bells and the whistles. We need to put some music in, some sound effects, some explosions, and scoring, things like that. But the basics are done, and that took about... I guess about 20 minutes or so to put together. So that's the basics of it. And we will add the bells and whistles in the next part.